Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the history of the magnetic field on planet Earth, and actually discuss something that happened on our planet a few hundred million years ago, when the planet almost completely lost its magnetic field, which at least in theory would have led to Earth becoming uninhabitable, or at least somewhat similar to planet Mars. But it didn't. The magnetic field then restored itself within approximately 15 million years, with the magnetic field returning to its original strength. So what exactly happened here, and why exactly did Earth not become like Mars? Why did our planet remain like this, while Mars only now has these pockets of magnetic field existing on its surface? And so this new study explores this in more detail, and might have actually discovered what happened to planet Earth, while also discovering this other thing that makes our planet so lucky lack enough to maintain necessary conditions for life for a long period of time, and lack enough to produce us. So what exactly happened here? Well, first of all, when it comes to the existence of the magnetic field, the early investigations point at the existence of the field as far back as 3.5 billion years ago. In other words, our planet might have actually had the magnetic field for a very long time. And the scientists today believe that the field itself is generated by the active dynamo inside the outer core of planet Earth. Or in other words, the liquidy part just above the inner core that seems to circulate a lot of liquid metal and a lot of metallic materials, and as a result produces the magnetic field that preserves life on the planet. But a lot of modern studies also discovered that approximately half a billion years ago, during the Cambrian period, the period that's also famous for the evolution of a lot of really strange, complex life on the planet, the magnetosphere of our planet almost completely collapsed. And specifically, approximately 565 million years ago, the magnetic field of planet Earth suddenly became approximately 10% of its original strength. Something that, at least in theory, could have completely destroyed the possibility for future life to evolve and for life to exist on the surface. In other words, historically, there was actually a time on planet Earth when it could have sort of become the new Mars. It could have slowly dried out and lost all of its water and potentially even atmosphere, because the magnetosphere would no longer be able to protect the planet from the very powerful emissions coming from the Sun. But something else started happening 550 million years ago, approximately 15 million years after the magnetic field suddenly started to restore itself to its original values, and it maintained the strength for the past 550 million years. Which of course suggests that something must have happened to our planet approximately 550 million years ago in order to restore the field and in order to, once again, allow the life to evolve and to thrive on the surface of the planet. And the question is what? What happened to planet Earth half a billion years ago to make it so lucky to evolve complex life on the surface? And it's not an easy question to answer. To answer this question, the scientists behind the paper you can find in the description below had to use a lot of samples and conduct a very thorough investigation using various types of minerals such as anorthosite that you see right here that generally tend to keep a pretty good record of the magnetic field when these minerals were originally formed. All of this is possible because of the deposits of magnetite inside the rocks that tend to align themselves with the magnetic field of the planet, allowing the scientists to study the strength and the orientation of the field. And so in this case, the anorthosite samples discovered in Oklahoma that were created approximately 550 million years ago allowed the scientists to sort of discover the mystery of what happened to the field back then. And as a side note, this particular period on the planet is extremely important because that's the period when we had something known as the Cambrian Explosion. The sudden explosion of a lot of strange multicellular life on the surface of Earth. And though it's not certain if this is somehow related to the magnetic field that seems to have been undergoing changes during that period, the correlation is still there. So what exactly was discovered here? Well, first of all, it's still kind of uncertain, but for some reason, approximately 550 million years ago, the field started to decline in strength. It's obviously not certain why yet, but it's possible that after 3 billion years of the existence of the field, something inside planet Earth might have actually decreased the temperature of the outer core, with the outer core now not circulating as much as before. And because of this, the field started to weaken and eventually almost completely collapsed. 
This is actually the same reason we believe Mars no longer has any field on the surface. But our planet did not suffer the same fate as Mars. Why not? So the scientists investigating the rocks discovered that the field started to strengthen around the same time as the sudden appearance of what we refer to as the inner core, the relatively large solid chunk of metal that's essentially right in the middle of planet Earth. And though it's not entirely certain when inner core started to form, a lot of recent studies do point at that period approximately 550 million years ago, meaning that prior to that, the planet only had liquid core, with the inner core simply forming because the planet started to cool down and the liquid metal on the inside started to form a solid deposit. But here's the super intriguing part. As this tiny chunk of solid metal developed inside the planet, it actually started to influence the outer core in a very unusual way. A lot of modern simulations and a lot of modern studies determined that the inner core, which today is basically a solid ball approximately 1200 kilometers across, or about 70% of the moon's radius, actually enriches the outer core in oxygen as the iron on the inside crystallizes. And by doing so, it dramatically decreases the density of the rest of the outer core, which then increases the circulation and the motion inside of it. In other words, the dynamo itself is to some extent caused and forced by the inner core and by the crystallization of iron. Or in more simpler words, as the inner core grows in size, it sort of forces the outer core to circulate more and thus maintains the magnetic field. And it does so by creating these convection currents, which are believed to be the primary driver that produce the magnetic field. And so what the scientists found here was that it was an unusual coincidence. When the Earth's magnetic field started to weaken, suddenly the formation of the inner core restarted the activity within just 15 million years, allowing the planet to restore its magnetic field in a very short period of time. And so the formation of the solid inner core completely recharged the magnetic field in just 15 million years. But by studying these rocks, they also discovered that approximately 450 million years ago, or 100 million years after the magnetic field was restored, the inner core might have changed its structure once again. It formed an unusual boundary between the innermost and outermost inner core. And in this case, the scientists think that it might have happened because of the activity of various continents and plate tectonics on the surface of the planet. Now, this particular discovery was discussed in more detail in the previous video that should be in the description or somewhere right there. But more importantly, this once again confirms that the inner core seems to possess two parts. So it's not just one chunky ball. But what exactly these two parts do and how they affect the planet is not really certain. Although I guess what's somewhat intriguing here is that it looks like the activity on the surface of the planet seems to affect some of the activity inside the inner core. With all of these discoveries being very important in our attempt to understand how exactly life survived on the planet for so long and how various types of complex life then managed to evolve on the surface of the planet. All of this seems to be connected. Because obviously if the magnetosphere of our planet did not survive for such a long time, there is no way the life would have been able to survive on the planet for so long either. At least complex life. If it wasn't for the magnetosphere, the planet would have become dry pretty quickly and would have lost its atmosphere a long time ago, becoming yet another planet Mars. Or similar to Mars. Which kind of adds to this really intriguing idea known as the Rare Earth Hypothesis. The idea that our planet might have experienced several really lucky events, with one after another, leading to the formation of really really complex life on the planet that actually would be practically impossible anywhere else in the universe. And based on some of the recent observations, really complex observations for many decades, and also based on this study and a lot of other studies, there is now more and more proof that, well, for one, life might be super rare in the universe, at least when it comes to complex life. And even if some life can exist elsewhere, it's a lot more likely to be extremely primitive and would not really have a chance to develop into something complex because of these other factors that our planet was just very lucky with. And in this case, the magnetosphere is just one of them. No other planet, no other object in the solar system seems to have gotten so lucky and experienced these events in just the right way. And so at the moment, many of these studies are actually giving more credibility to the idea of rare Earth. Is this really the only planet with complex life in the observable universe? 
are we the only ones out there? Now we'll actually be talking about this idea a little bit more in a separate video, but for now what this study tells us is that for some reason, as the magnetic field was weakening, suddenly something happened inside the planet to make it strengthen once again, which eventually led to the new mechanism allowing the magnetosphere to maintain itself for at least another few hundred millions of years. And in this case, it really was just pure luck that eventually led to the formation of multicellular complex life. Now, whether this is related to the Cambrian explosion and to the actual explosion of life, that's not a question we can answer yet. But we can definitely speculate, because the correlation seems to be there. Anyway, we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.